Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. My name is Cesar Cerrudo. I'm going to present Token Kidnappings Revenge. Uh, this is kind of follow up of uh, research I did before that was called uh, Token Kidnapping. Um, all the issues I found in previous research were fixed, and these are all new, uh, all new issues. The, the objectives of this talk are first to demonstrate that while Windows operating systems are getting more secure with every new version, there are still some issues that are very easy to find. Just scratching the surface, you can find some issues. Um, this allows to bypass protection, etc., as we are going to see. Um, another objective is try to to show you how I found these issues with the tools, with the techniques I used. So you can learn, so you can do it at home or work. So, so it's an important thing for me as a takeaway for you, if you can learn something today. Time, so uh, I'm going to, to be fast. I have a lot of demonstrations. So in the past, think about Windows 2000 and before, um, all the Windows services uh, used to run under the uh, local system account, which is the most powerful account on Windows operating systems. So if a service was compromised, then all the system was compromised. And then uh, with Windows 2003 and XP, Microsoft introduced a couple of new win uh, user accounts called network service and local service. This account has uh, restricted privileges. They have uh, fewer privileges than the local system account. So in theory, <coughs> they started to run some <coughs> system services under this account to prevent <coughs> when one of these services was exploited, that doesn't mean that all the system was uh, going to be compromised. Uh, then with Windows Vista, Windows 2008, and Windows 7, there were a lot of new protections for Windows services. Um, they improved a lot from the previous operating system version, but we are going to see that this uh, protection can be easily bypassed by some issues, by spreading some issues. So let's see some theory first about what is impersonation and what are tokens. So impersonation is, uh, we can say is uh, when a thread can act as it's running under another user account as the process that's on the thread. I mean, for instance, we have a, a process that is running uh, under the Win, uh, network service account. So that process can impersonate. So when a thread starts to impersonate, it can start acting as it, as it were another user. So when this thread starts to access resources such as uh, file system or registry, all the ACL checks are performed against the impersonated user and not the user that the process is running under. And there are many different APIs to impersonate. Here we have a few like impersonate name pipe client, impersonate logged on user, and RPC impersonate client. So when you call one of these um, APIs and, and a client connect to your service, then if you can impersonate, you start impersonating. In order to be able to impersonate, uh, the account that the process is running under has to have the impersonate a client after authentication privileges. Uh, this privilege is not uh, assigned to all users, only to accounts such as network service, local service, and accounts used to run service on Windows. Also, IIS, Internet Information Services, uh, worker processes, the processes that, that are used to run web application, those has impersonation privileges too. And also we have Windows management instrumentation processes, uh, which also has impersonation. And they run under network service, local service, and local system account. 
So when a, a thread starts to impersonate, it will get a impersonation, an associated impersonation token. Oh. Well, a token is a Windows object, object that has information about the, the security context of a thread of a, or a process. It includes information su such as the identity of the user and the privileges associated with the, with the user. There are two kinds of um, tokens. We have primary tokens and impersonation tokens. The primary ones are those that are assigned to processes during process creation. <clears throat> and then the impersonation tokens are those that are, uh, are get when a uh, threat impersonates. And there are different levels of impersonation. We have uh, security anonymous, identity impersonation, and delegation. We will focus on the impersonation level, which is when a threat can act like he's another user. On Windows XP and 2003, uh, the services run under the network service, local service, local system, or user account. And all the services on this Windows version can impersonate. There was a, a weakness I, I found in my previous research that um, the, if there were two processes, two service processes running under the same account, they could access each other and get a token, impersonation token from the other process and elevate privileges. So what Microsoft did f was uh, adding a protection to a special processes and services to avoid them to access each other and get token and elevate privileges. So they protected mostly processes that impersonate the system account. So for instance, they uh, protected the, the service that ran RPC. And they also protected Windows management instrumentation processes. We also impersonated the, the system account. Um, on Windows Vista, 2008, and Windows 7, one of the new protections that were added by Microsoft is called per server, per service SID. This is a, a really good uh, protection, but no. <coughs> Uh, it, but basically what they do is just uh, put a special ACL in the process object. So for instance, we have a service that is running on the, the network service account. So they remove the network service account from the ACL of the process and they insert a, a unique SD, SID on the ACL. This means that the other processes that are running under the network service account won't be able to access uh, these processes because they don't have permissions. Basically, this is almost the same protection they added to, to fix the issues uh, on Windows uh, XP and 2003. Uh, I found a couple of weaknesses on Windows Vista and 2008 that while the regular thread were properly protected by an ACL, like the same as the process, the thread from thread pools with our special kind of thread managed by pools on Windows is a functionality provided to automatically manage thread. They had the default ACL. So other process running on the same account could access these uh, thread pools and manipulate them and elevate privileges or do another things from another process different than the process that was attacking. <coughs> Um, another issue was like, um, I think I already said that, uh, Windows management instrumentation processes that runs on the network service, local service, and uh, system account, they were not protected by a uh, proper ACL. And these services, uh, these processes uh, impersonate the system account. So any other process <coughs> running under the same account can access these um, processes and steal the token and elevate privileges. So the fix that Microsoft uh, did was uh, properly protect the, the thread from the thread pools with a proper ACL, and also the same for the Windows management instrumentation processes. <clears throat> so when I 
When Windows 7 was uh, available, I think it was the release candidate, I decided to take a look at it to see if I could find some low-hanging fruit, just, like I said, scratching the surface to see, to see if there was something easy to find with simple tools. I will show you the tools. For instance, we have Process Explorer tool. This tool <coughs> allows you to, to run all the processes on a Windows system. You can see here the process names, the process IDs in this column, description of the process. Here you can see the username that the process is running under. You can see if DEP is enabled, the, <coughs> the integrity level of the process, <coughs> etc. And when you select one process, you can see information related to the process. Here you can, we can see all the handles the, the process has opened. We can see the token handles, the thread handles, registry, key handles, uh, same for file handles, etc. Also we can see the information related to the process, like the security, we can see the permissions, the ACL of the process, the privileges assigned it to the account that is, the process is running under, we can see the thread, it's a lot of information. For instance, if you double click over a service, in this case is SVC host process, which is a hosting process that is hosting many services inside. We can see here all the services. We can see the permissions, we can stop and start the services. This tool is really easy to use and uh, very powerful. So I started to play with this tool, looking around permissions, on um, processes, um, on the handles, um, etc. And I couldn't find anything uh, in a couple of minutes. So I think I also checked if the protections Microsoft added to fix the issues I found before were okay and everything was fine. So I thought that it was uh, pretty secure. Um, then I remember that I have found uh, a little issues, a little issue on Windows 2008. Um, but it's a minor issue. The issue is about um, on telephony service. We can see here. This is another SBC host process that is hosting uh, five services, and one of them is the telephony service, TAPI service. Um, the issue is that inside this process, there is a process handle from another process. You can see here the process ID is 1308. Uh, I don't know if you can see there. This one is process ID 976. And this service run under the network service account. You can see it here, network service account. But the other process that this process has the handle inside, that process was, let me see, 976. We can go to process 976. And this process ran under the system account. So this is weird because there is a process running under a low privileges uh, account having a handle, a process handle for a privileged process. So I took a look about Windows Debugger um, to see what were the access of that handle. So we can attach the, the process on Windows Debug and take a look at the handles. And you can see here the handle value in EXA notation. This is the handle from the process itself. And this is the handle from the process that it is running under the system account. And we can see here that it has granted access, uh, duplicate handle granted access. That means that from this process, I can access any handle from the other process, duplicate them, and do whatever I want. I can do almost anything with the other process. And this is clearly a, an issue because I am accessing from a process running under the network service account to a process running under the system account, which is the most powerful account on Windows. 
So I could duplicate, for instance, the primary token, which will be a system token, and use it to elevate privileges. It's pretty simple. But in order to exploit this issue, first, 